Hey guys, Lodicus here. In this video, I'm going to be doing quite an in-depth discussion on the Atomic Heart achievements. The first half of the video, I'm going to be discussing the bug that's breaking a lot of the achievements. And the second half of the video, I'm going to discuss all the missables that you may miss going through the game. So let's start with the bug that's breaking a lot of these achievements. If you happen to be playing through Atomic Heart and then you're finished for the evening, you finish your session and you close down the game, what you've instantly done there is reset all your achievement tracking to 0%. So any of the progressive achievements that go up throughout the game, such as scanning all mobs, collecting all chirpers, collecting all weapons for example, all these will be reset back to 0%. So the next time you load up your game and you start collecting the collectibles or collecting the weapons, the achievement tracking won't progress until you've caught up to that previous number. So for example, you picked up two chirpers, it progressed you 4%, you've closed your game down. The next time you load it up, you'll then need to collect three chirpers before it'll progress to 6%. This is achievement breaking because there's no way you're going to be able to get to 100% because once you've picked up a collectible, it disappears from the world and there's no chance that you're going to be able to go back and collect that again and it's going to void that achievement. However, I have devised a number of workarounds. There is a couple of cheeses or save scum glitches that you can do where you can progressively pick up the same collectible over and over again and that proceeds through the tracking all the way through to 100%. In the description of this video, I'll list all the broken achievements that you could lose achievement tracking on as well as the links to all my videos that have workarounds for those achievements. If you're looking to play Atomic Heart today, which is during launch week, there is two achievements that are going to be unobtainable or difficult to get. The Necromancer, which is to talk to every dead, and the Motherland doesn't forget its heroes, which is to unlock all achievements. Again, these are only unobtainable because the achievement tracking bug, once this is patched, this should hopefully resolve the issues with those achievements. So at the moment, you're only going to be able to get around 900 gamer score on Atomic Heart, and most of that's through using my workaround videos in the description below. Now that we've got the bug out the way, I'm now going to move on to the second half of this video and discuss in a little bit more detail about all the missable achievements. I'll also put them in the correct unlock order so it's nice and easy to follow along. In this video, I'll just be giving a brief description on how to unlock the missable achievement. If you do want further detail, I will put in the description the link to the full walkthrough for that achievement guide. The first missable that we're going to discuss is Atomic Heart, which is to complete the game in Hardcore mode. Although it doesn't state it in the description, Armageddon is actually the Hardcore mode. There's currently two methods of unlocking this achievement. Method 1 is to play through the entirety of the game on Armageddon. The second method is to play through the game on a difficulty of your choosing. So I went through on Peaceful Atom, which of course is easy. Once you've completely finished the game and killed the twins at the very end, you'll go through the end game credits and then eventually be kicked back to the main menu. At this point what you want to do is go to new game, make sure you select Armageddon and as you spawn in or load in into the gondola at the very start of the game, what you can do is go to menu, load and then load your previous save which will be just before the twins boss fight. Defeat them again in what should be Atomic Mode and then you should get the achievement pop for Atomic Heart. The second missable achievement that I'm going to discuss is shortly after you get off the boat or the gondola in Chelomay. This one's called How Can I Help which is to use the phone booth. After a couple of minutes of walking along the path at the very start of the game, you'll eventually come to a fountain and your objective will be to get round the crowd. At the left hand side of the fountain you'll see a white phone booth. All you need to do is interact with that and you should get the achievement. The third missable achievement is Scanner, which is to scan all available mob types. You'll be introduced to scanning once you've been saved by Granny Xena. To use the scanner on the Xbox, just double tap RB and continue to hold it down. And then you can scan the environment by using your crosshair. If you aim at an orange mob, it will give you some of their details and this will count towards your achievement progression. Again, this is missable because if you forget to scan an enemy type from within that zone and you leave the area, there may be no way of getting back to it. For example, if you engage in a boss fight, you must scan the boss before you kill it. 
if you don't and then you kill the boss and move on from that area there's a good chance you won't be able to get back or see that boss ever again and that achievement is kind of null and void you would have to restart the game all over again to get that achievement there is a workaround in place at the moment where we can use a save scum method this is a case of finding a new enemy type that you've not yet scanned such as a boss ensure that you've got a save point before you scan them then scan them reload your save scan them again and continuously do that until the achievement pops again if you want some more detail on that check my video in the description below the fourth missable achievement that i'm going to discuss is burning ears which is to find all chirpers these are the collectible pocket watches that you can pick up throughout the game there's roughly 90 in total to collect however in particular areas you can't return to so if you do miss a chirper in these areas there's no way of getting back and again that achievement is all null and void once somebody's got a decent collectibles guide available that shows all chirpers i would recommend using that and following along with that while completing the game if you were looking to try and get that achievement today there is another workaround using a save scum so similar to how the scanner works all you need to do is find a save point before you pick up a chirper then pick the chirper up press start reload your save pick up the chirper again rinse and repeat that method about 90 times and the achievement should pop again if you want more detailed description on that please check in the description below the fifth missable achievement that I'm going to discuss is Lord of War. This is to collect all weapons. There's a total of 11 weapons in Atomic Heart to collect. However, only 10 of these have blueprints. The only weapon not to have a blueprint in the game is the shotgun, which you get at the very start of the game as one of your first weapons. If you happen to dismantle the shotgun, there is no way of getting this back you won't find another shotgun throughout the game so whatever you do do not dismantle the shotgun as this will void your achievement however the other 10 weapons you do get blueprints for quite regularly throughout the game and they're quite easy to make so don't worry about those if like me you did dismantle your shotgun and you're stuck on 91 percent achievement tracking what you need to do is create all 10 weapons that you can in your current game Quit back to main menu, start a new game and quickly proceed until you get back to Granny Xena at the very start of the game. Where you acquire the shotgun, the achievement should pop, thinking that you have all 11 weapons. Again, if you want a little bit more detail on that, I'll drop the link in the description below. The sixth missable achievement is the Necromancer, which is to talk to every dead body. You'll start seeing dead bodies that you can talk to during one of the main story missions quite early on. It'll encourage you to go and speak to a dead body to try and open a door. After this point, you'll start seeing these guys cropping up more and more. And the easiest way to detect them is double tapping your scanner. They show up as like a blue haze or static on your scanner. This achievement is missable in the same way as Scanner and Burning Ears are. Due to this being a collectible, you need to talk to all dead bodies in this area before moving on. If you do move on, there's a high chance that you can't get back to this area and you've just voided that achievement. Unlike the other two collectibles, there's no way of cheesing this or using a save scum. It just doesn't seem to track for whatever reason. So at the moment, this achievement is unobtainable because there's no way you're going to sit through for several hours looking for all the dead bodies without turning your console or PC off. Once you turn it off, obviously the tracking resets to 0% and anything you've collected or spoke to before that point is null and void. Hopefully as you're watching this video they have patched the achievement tracking glitch then if they have all you need to do is follow along with a guide that tells you where every dead body is just so you don't miss one. The seventh missable achievement I'm going to discuss is strike. This is to kill the boss Hedgy without making a single shot and destroy all statues. Hedgy can be found at the entrance of the exhibition center during the mission The Brave New World. As you enter the boss fight arena, you'll find an upgrade station and a save point. At this point, I would suggest storing all your firearms as you won't be needing them. Instead, keep hold of a melee weapon and fill all remaining slots with health capsules to keep yourself alive. 
run speed and dodge upgrades under the character category are also useful for evading Hedgie's attacks. Once you've got your inventory and upgrades sorted, just head over to the save point and make a solid save. This is obviously going to be our baseline for the fight. To start the boss encounter, you need to raise the statue out of the ground using your electric shock attack. These are the statues mentioned in the achievement description. All we need to then do is stand behind the first one and Hedgy should charge into it, crashing to the floor and exposing a weak spot. Here you can get a few blows into his weak spots while he's rolling around on the floor. These are the orange nodes that you can see that are exposed on his side. Once we've got a couple of blows in, we can then move around the arena. It is going to take a little while before we can activate a new statue, so it's just a case of staying alive. Hedgy will do various charge attacks which can be dodged with B. He also does a ground slam which creates a shockwave. These can be jumped over with A. As always, just keep your distance and heal where needed until another terminal pops out the ground. Once a terminal has popped out the ground, what we can then do is electric shock that terminal. It will then raise another statue out the ground. We then have to stand behind the statue and wait for Hedgy to roll into it. Again, once he rolls into it, he's going to fall over and expose some weak spots on his side. Just smash those up with your melee weapon and then all you need to do is rinse and repeat this throughout the fight until all statues have been destroyed. If you fail to destroy all five statues during this fight, what you can then do is just reload your previous save and try your best to remember what statues you didn't destroy as this does seem to be cumulative over multiple reloads. For example, in my first run I destroyed 4 out of 5 statues, however in my second run I destroyed 3 out of 5, but for whatever reason the achievement still popped, maybe because I destroyed one of the unique statues which I missed the first time. As long as we get both achievements for Hedgy, we can then move on with the story progression and on to the next missable achievement. The 8th missable achievement we're going to discuss is Apple Pie. This is to collect all apples in Limbo. You'll go to Limbo at the very end of the VDNH exhibition complex when you get knocked unconscious. Once you reach the dream world of Limbo, you'll have to collect all 114 apples that are spread across the level. Some of the later apples can be quite difficult to reach as you need various parkour jumps to reach them. This achievement is marked as missable because if you leave Limbo by going through the red and white pipe at the very end of the level, there is no way of coming back so you will avoid the achievement if you haven't got all the apples. Similar to the other collectibles, this also can be cheesed or save scummed. What I would suggest doing is just collecting the first 30 to 40 apples around the starting house where you spawned in. Then press the menu button and load previous save. You'll then load back into the same house, but all the apples will have respawned again. As you start picking up these same apples again, the achievement tracking should continue. Just rinse and repeat this method three or four times until you've got all 114 apples and the achievement should pop. Once the achievement for apple pie has popped, you can then safely leave the level by climbing over the submarine and out through the red and white pipe. Our ninth missable achievement is Chop Chop Chop, and this is to kill a Belliash with a melee weapon. You'll encounter the Belliash during the mission The Show Must Go On when you first reach the theatre. The theatre entrance also looks suspiciously like a boss arena, and this is where Belliash will spawn. To get the Chop 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 achievement to pop pop pop, you'll need to complete this boss fight with a melee weapon only. So similar to what we did with Hedgy, maybe put your firearms away and fill the rest of the space with health capsules. Thankfully the Belliash fight is relatively easy to do with just a melee weapon. He has quite slow and obvious melee attacks and lunges. The only thing that might catch you out is his ground pound which is similar to Hedgy's. You'll have to jump over the orange shock waves to avoid damage. Once the Belliash drops down to around 50% health, he'll start using his flamethrower attack. This also sets fire to the grass, so just keep out of the way of the fire. While he is using the flamethrower, he is quite vulnerable from attacks from behind, and this is key to just jump in with the melee weapon and deal some damage. 
Once he eventually goes down, you should get both achievements for one killing him and then chop 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 for killing him with a melee weapon. If for whatever reason the achievement does not pop, just load your previous save and try again until the achievement pops. Our 10th missable achievement is called Murderous Beauty and this is to kill both of the twins. This has been marked down as a missable achievement because depending on which ending you pick at the end of the game, you'll either meet the twins or you won't. So once you've got to the very end of the game and you've been in the lighthouse, you'll get knocked out and sent into limbo again. Once you wake up, you'll wake up beside Granny Xena. During a long conversation with Granny Xena, she'll give you one of two options. You can either pick option one, which will give you what we call the weak ending, and then option two, which would be the true ending and take you through to fight the twins. So at this point, make sure you select option two, so you go on through to fight the twins. If for whatever reason you picked option one, you can revert to an earlier save, go back through and talk to Granny Xena and pick option two. Once you've got through to the top of the high rise, we will have a boss fight with both of the twins. Once they've been defeated, the achievement for Murderous Beauty should pop. Congratulations, you have now finished the game. This might be a good point to double check the Atomic Heart achievement to see if you can then use the save glitch to pop the Hardcore Mode achievement. Once the end credits have rolled and you returned back to the main menu, you will notice there is an additional option to return to facility 3826. This will allow you to return back to the open world where you can mop up any of the smaller achievements such as killing people in particular ways or completing all the testing grounds. We've now covered the missable achievements in game, so I'm going to close this video out. So please like and subscribe if you found this information useful. If you do have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I will get back to you.